guys, Emily Roberts here. Finally, my Wi-Fi is working. Yay! Okay, I am so excited to be here with you, and I'm so excited the Wi-Fi is working, and I appreciate all of you guys who have been tuning in and asking me questions about who is the guidance girl? Who am I? Why am I here? Why do I do what I do? Why did I write a book? Why am I a therapist? Why do I talk about mental health? Oh, God, the easy answer would be like, because I want to help people. But the longer answer of this is because it has to do with who I am and where I came from in a lot of ways. Um, in a society where we are all kind of comparing ourselves to these people online, these things online that don't really exist, I'm going to say particular celebrities who are out there who aren't genuine, I want to be different. I want to be able to... I am different, actually. I want to be able to show you guys who I am on the inside and things that I've gone through because no one goes through life unscathed, okay? We've all been here. We've all done that. We've all got the t-shirt in some ways, but I've been there and I want to talk about it. I want to be genuine. I want to be open and honest because that drives connection and connection is real. Don't you agree? How many of you have been to a therapist before or worked with somebody and they just kind of acted better than you or they acted like they weren't super interested in what you were saying? They gave you advice, but they weren't listening or hearing you or connecting with you. It's so invalidating and that's what happened to me. When I was growing up, um, I moved to Texas when I was 13. Parents, if you can avoid moving your kids during the teenage years, I would suggest doing that. It was pretty traumatic. So, well, it really was. I mean, when you think about it, that's a really emotionally vulnerable time for a lot of people. But also, it was so stressful for me because I went from knowing everyone in Seattle to moving to a tiny little town in the middle of Texas. It was crazy. You guys, I went from riding a bike, um, going to the store, going to the movies with my friends, to going 20 miles um, down the road on a bike wouldn't have been successful because it was still like a dirt road. It was really uh, a challenge for me. And the reason that I went is because um, I had no choice. My parents made me do this. But I also had to start going to therapy. And that's what made me uh, really kind of hate therapy for a while. And I decided that I wanted to be the person that I didn't have when I was growing up, which was somebody who listens. It was somebody who talks about emotions because emotions are real. real. It was somebody who could understand because I've been in a teenager's shoes. And I'm also not against learning more about what their life is like. Whereas I had people telling me, you shouldn't do X, Y, or Z. You need to be X, Y, or Z. That wasn't helpful. I totally thought they were really lame adults and I didn't want to listen to them. So instead, I work with a lot of people anywhere from you know little kids to adults, and I try and understand where they're coming from and share my story with them. This is part of it. Part of it is that I was a depressed teenager. I was anxious. I had low self-esteem, horrible confidence, and also you know, I struggled with an eating disorder for a little bit throughout high school and part of college. Finally, I found a therapist who got me, who heard me, who told me about her and explained to me that things weren't the way that I was taking them on. It was they felt that way and that was valid, but to look at him differently. But the way that she expressed herself to me, the way that she, huh, like my book, expressed herself, but the way that she did express herself to me was that she understood and tr at least try to understand to help me. And that's the reason that I became a therapist. The second part of the story isn't as um, clean, so to speak, uh, not in a rap dirty way or a way that is like swearing. It's not as easy because it was my, um, adulthood pretty much. It was me kind of transitioning to adulthood and recognizing that it wasn't the path that I thought it was going to be. How many of you guys actually sit there and think to yourself, or maybe you did not when you were younger, oh my God, if I get the job or if I get the um, degree, if I get the house, if I get the car, if I get the boyfriend, if I get the girlfriend, if I get the relationship, I'll be happy. That's going to make me happy. I'm going to feel confident. I'm going to feel good about myself. If I lose X amount of weight, if I do X, Y, or Z, I'm going to feel what? Good about myself? BS. It's all BS. I didn't realize until after a breakup, a breakdown, and a big reality check that happiness comes from within. Yeah, it sounds super corny, but like really, it does come from within. If you're not, I mean, Frank, how many of you guys have thought about this before? Oh, if I get this achievement or if I accomplish this, then I'll be happy. Really? It sounds like that because we live in a society that wants to reinforce that. But in reality, the happiness and the urge and the willingness has to come from within. How do we do that? That's what I'm here to help you guys with. And I learned through a lot of um, not so great decisions, right? I learned from mistakes, actually. I learned from being human that 
you've really got to try new things, try things to make yourself feel better. I moved to New York City when I was like 26, 27. I don't even remember right now. Why? Not because I was like, oh, pff, peace out, Austin. I'm leaving. I'm going to leave my stuff behind because I knew that I needed to take a break because what was happening there wasn't working, meaning I was overcome with emotion. I could not really work as well as I wanted to. I didn't even like my job anymore. It was something I thought I had to do to feel happy, and it was making me feel what? Crappy. I was in a pattern where I would put people before myself, we before me instead of me before we, relationships, toxic friendships, me where I was doing things to myself that I wouldn't, like I was totally hurting myself. The stress was so much, and I was a therapist. No one taught me that I could take care of myself and then I could take care of others. I thought that I had to take care of others and then take care of myself. And I know that so many of you struggle with this too because you've told me. Emily, how did you do it? Well, it took a long time for me to figure out what to do, but I, be, I was able to do it. And I know that you guys are able to do it too. I want you guys to learn to put yourself first because my God, the stuff that comes after is amazing. Would I have been able to write a book, have a blog, be on TV, to work these jobs that I love and take care of other people's emotions if I didn't take care of myself. Sure, there are some days where people will tell you that I probably should need to take like a mindfulness break and take a second to just chill out, but I wouldn't be able to have done these things unless I would have gotten real with myself, and I did get real with myself. I took a moment after one of the most horrendous experiences of my life, which was this breakup, and I will get to more details about that soon. So, um, bear with me here. It may not be in this video, but maybe we'll see if we get to it. Totally threw me for a loop. Like I didn't know what was happening. It was my breakup, not with this person. It was my breakup with my old self. The things weren't working that I thought were going to work. Has that ever happened to you guys? I'm sure it has where you're like, yay, this is my, I'm so excited. This is going to happen. And it doesn't happen. And you're, you're, you're so excited because you think it's going to make you happy and it doesn't. So you have to try something different. And I was too scared. I was too broken, quite frankly, and too on the ground. Like, literally, I, I was so depressed that I didn't think I could get through this. But I did. How did I get through it? It was not pretty. Nah. I'd have my friends come over. I'd have people. But not even for a day. This was like months. Right? And I was a therapist. I was an adult. I should be able to handle this. I should be happy. I've got all these things happening. Nope. The way that I actually found happiness was accepting that this sucked. The thing that I thought was going to make me the happiest wasn't. The career, the, the, um, the car, the house, the friends, they made me feel okay sometimes, but they didn't bring me happiness. I had to work on me, and that's when I decided that I needed to take a break from what I was doing and take a little bit of time to work on myself. I, by the way, it wasn't like I decided to go do this with like a trust fund or something. No, I had to take time. I planned it out. I said, you know what? I don't want to do this forever. I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to be this negative energy in the world. So what did I do? Took it upon myself to try and come up with it. Like, you know, getting out of it. I tried to get out of it in a very effective way where I wasn't eating ramen and traveling in a backpack. And no, I had an apartment. I had things I planned ahead of time because I wanted to try something new. And five years later, here I am. Right? I was able to go and be uncomfortable in New York City, right? Be more mindful in this place. And guess what wound up happening? I actually found some clarity. I had to get away for a little while, but it wasn't like I took this break. Like I went on, you know, this European vacation or this psychological um, hospitalization or anything like that. No, I came to New York City to get away from everything that was comfortable because I was so used to things being easy. I could never be alone. I didn't have to be. My family lived close by. My friends were always there. I grew up in a town, or I, I was in a town where I knew everybody. I was never having to be alone and deal with those feelings. When I moved here, or took this you know, hiatus here in some ways, I moved back and forth from Austin, I was able to actually sit with my emotions because I didn't know anybody. This is also before Facebook worked the way it works now. It's before text messaging was as rapid as it is now, before we even had, you know, we did have Instagram. I will, we did have some Instagram. It didn't work as well as it does now. But, you know, this was me having to sit with my emotions, think about what do I really want in life, right? I mean, huge question, please. I'm not getting super heady with you all, but think about it. What do I want? What isn't working out? How do I want to feel? And it was not exactly the prettiest thing. It was a cold, cold winter. But I did it, and I'm continuing to do it, and it's a process, and I'm sharing this with you because I know so many of you are in a position where you're not finding happiness or fulfillment in what you're doing, and I was there too. It was this journey that I thought I was going to have to take to be happy, and it made me 
again, crappy. I'm sharing those tools with you now because the last thing I want for you is to be insecure. I was so insecure. I tried to please everybody. I was in, again, these relationships that were unfulfilling and yet I thought I needed these people. Friendships, romantic relationships, it, it sucked. It took away my fire. It took away my power. It took away my presence and it dulled me out and it made me feel miserable and it gave me ulcers and it gave me sleep cycle issues, et cetera, et cetera. The reason I'm telling you this is because you don't have to go through what I went through. And if you are, it's okay. We can get through it. You just have to be willing to try new things. And I'm going to help you with that if you want. I'm going to provide you with the tips that I've, I've, I've used on myself and with other people. I came here and I'm learning and I have learned from really amazing people how to deal with this stuff. Why? Because the way I thought I was dealing with it and the way that you might think that you're dealing with things isn't working anymore. If it was, you wouldn't be listening to this video. If you're finding yourself in a position where things are supposed to make you happy and they're not, it's not necessarily because you're depressed. It's not necessarily because something happened to you when you were younger. It could be because the expectations you have for yourself are smaller than they need to be. You may have way bigger things planned for you, yourself that you just don't know about yet because you're living small. You're not giving yourself credit. You're not giving yourself respect. You're not. You're allowing your mean girl in your mind or the bully in your brain to dictate what you're doing, to help to control you and make you feel like you don't have the power or the confidence to go out there and say things that you deserve to say and to share your story or to do what you really want to do regardless of what that is. So with the skills that I want to teach you guys and with the stories that I want to tell you guys comes a lot of these tips and I want to know what other questions you have for me. Yes, I shared some vulnerable stuff with you. Did I share it all? Yeah, right. There's so much more of the juicy details to come. But I wanted to give you this because it's not like I just popped up, happy kid, happy adult. No. It was horrible in a lot of ways. It really was. And I got through it. And there were some beautiful moments. And there were some really bad ones. So if you can, for yourself, at least figure out what's not working and what you want to change, that's where I'd start. I'd also start recognizing that no one's perfect, especially on the internet. There's filters. There are people trying to pretend like your friends online, that their kids are perfect, that their friends are perfect. You know that took like 27 pictures, okay, for them to get the perfect family shot or even the selfie that looks like they're having a great time. What were they doing for the 99 um, other minutes of the day? Or, excuse me, that's not even the right math. The 24 hours and 59, 23 hours and 59 minutes, see, there we go of the rest of the day that wasn't taking the selfie. Was it perfect? Was it amazing? Are they looking at their feet and trying to make themselves feel better about um, how many people are liking them? Is their self-worth coming from that? Likely. I see so many people who are, come in and they're depressed because no one likes their Instagram. It's not real. So stop buying into it. Well, it's really hard not to, so I'll teach you some tools and tips to help you get it there. But really, for right now, think about this. We have all gone through stuff. We have. Not all of us share it because people don't want to see that they, people don't want to say that they have flaws. Well, flaws are what make us freaking awesome in some ways. So do yourself a favor and start thinking about what are some of the things that you want to improve on and what's not working out right now. For me, that was me being a therapist and me being in a relationship that was unfulfilling and me being in a people pleaser. It's what it was. But now I know what's not making me happy and I'm willing to do something about it. And I want that for you. Okay, so that's my spiel. Thank you so much for listening. I want to know what your questions are. Direct message me. If you like this um, and you like the stuff I'm talking about and it vibes with you, fabulous. That's why I'm here and I'm excited about that. You can subscribe to the page and I'm going to be actually um, starting to send out some information like skills that are actually useful. Blogs that I've written for you guys um, that I want to share with you that could be really instant happy and instant gratification. Um, hopefully, instant confidence. That's kind of my jam right now. Um, so like the page, let me know if you have questions, comments, other things that you want and subscribe. I look forward to hearing from you and I really look forward to helping you guys. Thanks so much. That's on the page below. Like it, comment, whatever. Take care guys. Have a great day. Bye.